Well, the success of cooperatives at the county level is vital for the economic health of households. Development partners say most people can be financially empowered if they are given financial management skills, capacity building programs at the counties have so far helped county cooperatives withstand the adverse effect of financial uh, disruptions. Here is Alan Aoka with more details. Hello and welcome. This is Business Insight and what a show we have for you today. My name is Alan Aoko. We want to talk cooperatives today. We want to talk cooperative movements. We want to talk about policy and frameworks that govern this cooperative movement. And with us on set today, we have three guests. We have Jacqueline Mugeni, who is the CEO of the Council of Governors. And we also have Edna Muni, who is a director executive uh, of education at the Strathmore University Business School. And we also have with us Olga Oye, who is a country team lead, a US, USAID uh, CLEAR program. Welcome to the program, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think I'd like to start with Jacqueline Mugeni. And Madam Jacqueline, you are an advocate of the High Court and you have a background of of, of human rights. Perhaps you can warm this conversation for us and tell us how does the cooperative movement affect the end user, the person on the ground? Why is it important for us to have a streamlined cooperative movement for membership? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Alan. Um, as you said, I work at the council and uh, our role is to ensure that um, the functions that were devolved to the counties really find um, a home within the counties and one of these uh, functions is cooperatives. Cooperatives are fully devolved function and uh, and it's not a new um, issue in Kenya, it's actually very old. Eh? The asset base for cooperatives in Kenya is about five billion dollars you can imagine and the, young, the, the people in the grassroots are the ones who deposit in the cooperatives and they use it to grow uh, cottage industries, their small businesses and so it's very very important that it's managed well uh, so we don't run into uh, problems like the uh, pyramid schemes that we saw in Kenya because these are I don't want to call uh, people in the uh, urban uh, rural areas poor. They are not poor people but they need a vehicle that does not cheat them out of their hard-earned resources. We have to now bring in uh, you know, development partners to help us streamline this sector. Um, when you say bring in, it sounds like we were stuck. Huh? <laughs> it's really not that. As governments, uh, we, we, we like partnerships because we know that, uh, as the saying goes, if you want to go, uh, to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. So uh, actually, it's bringing the partnerships that we are developing with development partners is to help us strengthen our cooperative movement in Kenya. And uh, maybe I need to tell you, Alan, that um, there are many countries who come to learn f from Kenya on our cooperatives. For example, Rwanda has come and learned from Kenya on our cooperatives and gone and replicated what we are doing in Kenya, and they are doing very well. And so uh, our coming together development partners is about strengthening so that we can be able to go far. You've heard about our asset base. You've heard about what uh, the rural investors are doing. And so if this is the vehicle that the rural investors have chosen to do, it's important that it's managed well. Uh, the success of uh, the cooperative bank stem, stems from the smallest cooperatives that we started in this country. Uh, the investors within the counties find it easy to use the cooperatives because they also have less stringent rules like the ones for the banks. So yes, we've, we are partnering with development partners to help us go far, not that we are stuck. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Indeed, that's very encouraging, especially when you say that there's still a lot of potential in the grassroots that mm -hmm. perhaps many people have overlooked. And maybe a viewer out there is wondering, why is Strathmore Business School even here at all? Uh, perhaps, um, um, Edna Muni, maybe you can uh, you know, warm us up into the conversation. Why is uh, uh, Strathmore Business School here? And uh, why do we need this capacity building in the first place? Thank you, Alan. Uh, Strathmore Business School Executive Education Department, we are tasked with the responsibility of organizational learning and development. And we focus in uh, several major areas. So we look at leadership and management, we look at public policy, we look at healthcare, we look at agribusiness, corporate governance, and we also look at entrepreneurship. And so these particular programs are designed such that you can have them as an open program, meaning that they are tailored and you buy them off the shelf. And so you will have participants coming from various companies, various industries, and being in the class. 
or they can be customized to meet the needs of a particular organization or a particular institution. So the Strathmore University Business School is here because over time, uh, since the beginning of the institution in 2005, we have developed capacity to deliver programs both locally in Kenya as well as uh, other countries where we have physical footprint, that is uh, Uganda, Tanzania and Rwanda, as well as other places where we don't have a physical footprint, but we're able to provide programs digitally such as South Africa, Mauritius, uh, Botswana, Ghana, and many other countries. And uh, you, you indeed you mentioned about uh, 40 trainees successfully graduated with a certificate in public policy making processes. And um, this now brings me now to development partners who have reached across the world. And I'll ask Olga, tell us, you know, since your organization has been all over the world, do you think in this particular case in Kenya, when it comes to corporate policy, cooperative uh, policy and legislative and regulatory framework, have you seen issues of redundancies? Because you find sometimes, uh, we find some laws are either, you know, too redundant or, you know, one isn't clear enough. What are some of those rough edges this kind of program brings into the policy framework that we already have? Thank you, Alad. Um, let me start off by just giving a small context. So global communities, um, the global communities in Kenya is implementing the Cooperatives Leadership, Engagement, Advocacy and Research Program. It's funded by USAID and um, its, its uh, lifespan is from 2018 to 2023. I say that deliberately because I do appreciate that as development partners with the programs that we come on board with, they have, a, they have a lifeline, yes? And in this case, our lifeline is five years. And so through the, um, we, we, we walked this journey and did our baseline survey with 30 counties, 22 counties responded, and we identified certain skill gaps because we were curious to establish why after beginning the devolved system of government in 2013, um, come 2019, when we carried out the baseline survey, there were very few counties that had their legal, their county-specific cooperatives legislation in place. And when we did this baseline survey, we found that there were actual skill gaps um, in terms of understanding this this role. My role as a policymaker at the county level, what does it mean to create an enabling environment for cooperatives to thrive? When it comes to matters of policy and, and, and making a regulatory framework, it does indeed take time. And this is where now I bring in uh, uh, Madam Mogeni. Um, according to a survey uh, by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, which was released early this year, it indicates that approximately 400,000 micro, small, and medium enterprises do not even celebrate their second birthday. And this comes when you know many of the members of, 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 of cooperatives pull their money into cooperatives to run their businesses. And we still have a situation where businesses are going down either because of lack of skills, uh, inadequate knowledge. So my question is this, are we going to look into a situation where in the county level, I have a small business and I do not have that technical know-how, but I have an idea. Can I come into the nearest county office and get the advice that I require? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Alan. Um, you know, at, at the council, we have um, Marifa Center, which is our knowledge, uh, our best practice center. It actually documents best practices innovations um, and we uh, it, you can access it both virtually and physically and one of the things that center does is to give information on if you want to inc like for example the issue of uh, cooperatives I'm sure that you could if you went to the best practice center you can be able to see how corporate little cooperatives have started it's been an inno innovated it is it's been incubated and it's grown so we encourage peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning uh, at the grassroots level from the communities but also the governors they go to other counties to learn and um, the uh, and, and documenting that process helps us to 
and we don't we don't document just best practices alone. We also document bad practices, eh? or even bad practices where cooperatives are started today, tomorrow they are dead. So that people don't repeat, go through the same the same way. Our responsibility as the institution, child with the um, mandate of ensuring we protect the best practice, best uh, interest of all the 47 counties, is to ensure that we do not have uh, the country littered with cooperatives that have have come up and died. But all, that takes me to my other point that. We also partner with the national government. To, as we speak now, the national task force to, for implementation of the cooperatives policy, I don't know that it was gazetted yesterday, it will be gazetted by Friday. And the council is part of that particular task force. And the task force role is to ensure that the cooperatives thrive in this country at whatever level, be they cooperatives of uh, Boda Boda, cooperatives of Mamamboga. And so it's, uh, it's a journey. We will go work with them slowly so that they can be able to learn. It's good to have the papers, but most importantly, it's good to have the skills that are ingrained so that the, the cooperative, cooperatives that are started by women, by the youth, do not collapse on day two because they've lacked skills. Thank you. The Deloitte Kenya Economic Outlook a few years back said that one of the challenges that we face in almost every sector when it deals with money is uh, the risk management strategies that are, you know, some are collapsing or they are not really streamlined. But this is a conversation that is so interesting, but we are running out of time. However, uh, it's only fair that we, we have a round of a last word, that word that you'd like uh, Kenyans to know about the sector. Uh, maybe we can start with Olga. Olga, tell us your last word. Thank you. Um, thank you, Alan, for that. So maybe as a parting shot, what I can say is, yes, there is hope. And um, we have, a, as a program, we have a sub-award with USIU Africa. So there is hope. And um, Alan, back to your comment, no, our support is not a one-off. We, we are here for the long haul, and we are also working to create, through the Kenya Cooperatives, uh, Co Cooperative Development Organizations platform, we are creating systems and networks to continue uh, supporting the movement even uh, post-program completion. So I would like to just encourage you know, other institutions, even as they, within the cooperative movement, that uh, really the, the call is to harmonize our policy and legislative environment to create an, an enabling environment for our cooperators and also to improve the livelihoods of Kenyans. Thank Outs you, Alan. Outstanding. Thank you very much. And now, Director Muni. Thank you, Alan. Uh, my parting shot is we are really grateful for the uh, opportunity to partner with USAID and global communities. And this speaks to what we can be able to achieve in terms of partnerships. When we partner between the government, whether it's the national government and the county governments, development partners and, uh, and academia, this means that we can be able to create a very strong partnership that can support our nation in growing and even becoming stronger than we are right now. Whether they're in our counties or in other counties, because I'm sure we have friends who are in other counties. And even as we work with the Council of Governors to do trainers, uh, training of trainers, so that then we can extend the lifeline, again, we still will not be able to train everybody. Mm. So my appeal to those who are attending classes is that can we see how we can multiply knowledge to those that have not been able to attend uh, the classes. Let us build a strong uh, cooperative movement. Let us bring uh, inclusion of the youth and women, and let us reduce inequalities and position Kenya as a global uh, player that it is. So thank you so much, Alan. Much appreciated. Indeed, thank you very much. Very passionate there. And last but not least, Madam again. Yes, thank you very much, Alan. And I'll just echo what my, for my, co my colleagues have said. Um, we know that programs have a, a lifeline, uh, but government doesn't have a lifeline. So whatever has been injected into government mo is there in perpetuity. So there is hope. The asset base is huge. All we need to do is to tap it, and most importantly, to remove any politics in the cooperatives movement because it's for the Mwanainchi. Let the Mwanainchi be on the driver's seat, and the, the, our, ourselves as governments is to create an enabling environment. And so that is what we are doing, and I would encourage all citizens, if they can, get into the cooperatives movement because it helps during this COVID season. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been able to bounce back. You will be able to bounce back. So just get into cooperatives movement. Start slowly, you will grow. So thank you very much.
Indeed, that's a very interesting uh, clarion call there. We have been speaking uh, to Jacqueline Mugeni, who is the CEO of the Council of Governors, and as well as Eda Muni, who is the Director Executive Education at Strathmore Business School, and also Olga Oyer, who is the Country Team Lead, USAID Clear Program. Thank you very much. That has been our time, and we hope you have been impacted and that you have got something from this conversation. My name is Alan Aoko. Have a nice time. Thank you. Thank you.